rather related to what might be called the change in anti-Semitism in different parts of the French society. And see, he's very much insisting, because the questions are arising as to whether the image is Israel is important or not, but within the framework of the research, that was, I would say, at best, a marginal problem. The ma major problem, and of course he was uh, really connecting us together, because each one was working on his own side, and I was working on anti-Semitism in prison, Another group was working on anti-Semitism in a small town, Saint-Saëlle, close to Paris. Another group was working on anti-Semitism in the university. Another group was working on anti-Semitism in school, and so on. So the major topic was this phenomenon. And I think he has a kind of French spirit of, uh, you know, contradicting, <laughs> having, he likes, you know, uh, those sorts of debates. Because he knows it and I know it, that the major topic was not this aspect. This was one aspect, you know, within the framework of anti-Semitism, but was at best, from my point of view, uh, not the essential one. The essential was really what he did as a good job, sociological job, and I'm sorry that he didn't have enough time to explain it here, because the topic was not the book, it was the difficulty of anti-Semitism. He should devote another conference to the real book, <laughs> so, you can do it, Farad, right, better than I. No, we should do it together, but I, no, I mean, it's, the, the book is beautiful, I mean, the book is wonderful, so, the image in here, I think, is partially distorted because of that, because, uh, that's, this topic is not the book, in a way, this topic is how difficult it is, it's true, and I fully agree with it, how difficult it is, and this difficulty was not only with Jewish uh, institutions, it was with many, Leftists, as we said, but very much leftist groups who said you're an imperialist because you're defending, you know, uh, Jews and so on and this and so, and was with many other groups, you know, who, in the name of Islam, you know, criticized his defending, you know, the idea that anti-Semitism should be fought against. Um, I, I can't. Um, I want to thank you both, but I can't directly into that. But I was comparing your experience. I mean, the argument that Jews only care about Israel is an exception of an earlier argument before there was Israel that Jews don't care about their own nations. They only care about Jews. That's Napoleon's famous question in Minerva, 1804 or something. You know, you can be citizens if you give up your allegiance to Israel to, and become French citizens. And I was what I was thinking in whether that's more of an issue in a more Republican kind of country like France, which doesn't see itself as a nation of immigrants. I was wondering about in the United States. It's considered very normal for immigrant groups to always support the country they came from, you know? Uh, so we expect the Greeks and the Russians and the uh, Bulgarians and the Mexicans always to support uh, the, against the United States often, uh, the interests of their home country and it's not thought of as uh, unusual. And I don't know that that particular aspect of Jewish behavior in the United States is in fact um, seized on here as a ground for criticizing Jews. I, I mean, that's an, that's an issue of discussion, but I don't, I don't think so. And I wonder if you, in your research, since I know you're also a comparative thinker, have thought about the, whether it's particular or not to France or other kinds of countries. Well. Thank you for this, because it's a very, very important point. I did not make comparisons, but what I can say is that if there are so many patients, if there are so many troubles all around this problem, it's because, I will say it now like that, it's because also, there are, uh, among all the big changes in the French society since the late 60s or the 70s, one of the main changes was 
the crisis of the French Republican model, or the French Republican idea. And the Jews are maybe the symbol of this crisis. In France, until the 60s, the Jews were not called Jews. They were called, with a French word, Israelites. I don't know if there is an American word, Israelites, I don't Which means you are Jewish in your private life, but in the public life there is no only individuals. This is the Republican model. So, and then for many reasons things started to change during the 60s, and today Jews are very far from the classical Republican model. They love the French Republic, but they are also much more American, if I can say it like that, visible, connected with Israel, and I mean, they are much more, um, some people would say, Americanized or ethnicized. It's a, so. so these are huge changes, and it is very difficult in a country where most intellectuals and politicians want to promote the classical idea of republic, to deal with anti-Semitism, because dealing with anti-Semitism is to support a group who is supposed to be within the classical model, but which in fact is no longer. So, I should be certainly more precise. And so, but you touch, you touch something very important, and there is a very interesting case in this debate. It's the case of a French uh, intellectual, I, I quoted his name, whose name is Alain Finkielkraut. Alain Finkielkraut is a French intellectual, maybe some of you I've read what he's published, with a, a hardliner, a Jewish intellectual, a hardliner defending the French classical model of the Republic. Hardliner, really. Listen, every Saturday morning, morning, there is a program on France Culture, which is a big radio program. There is his program every Saturday morning, and he defends the values of the French Republic. But the same Alain Finkielkraut is a kind of icon within the Jewish community. And every mon Monday or Tuesday, I don't know, there is, there are programs with him on, uh, I don't know, Radio Shalom or Radio Jewish, Jewish programs. So on the one hand, he's defending strongly the Republican model, which means only individuals in the public sphere. And on the other hand, it's a kind of schizophrenia, on the other hand, he is appearing as a, an icon, a, a very important, maybe the more important French Jewish intellectual philosopher. It's difficult to be both, and so this is an illustration of what is at stake now in France, that is to say, um, anti-Semitism can be connected with the crisis, with the crisis of the Republican model. And what Farad was saying too briefly, the jail in France should be Republican. There should be only individuals in jail, and you can just help a little bit for food or for religion. So, but what happens is that Jews are treated as a community, while Muslims are not treated as such. And so, the Republican model does not work. It is good for the Jews. This is how people lives it. It's good for the Jews, they receive kasha food, they can have their rabbi and so on. And you have much more Muslim, but the Republic is not giving them anything. So there is a strong, and we and I have no time to develop, but we did a lot of work in school, primary school or high schools. It's fascinating to see how the crisis of the school system is part of the problem also. Just two questions, but before we ask the next question, I want to interject. I think you said something actually quite profound. Thank you. Well. At the beginning, you were saying that, that, that anti-Semitism is less biological than ethnicized. And yet now, in response to Professor Alexander's uh, question, you're, you're pointing out that Jews are, or the Jewish community is less in the Republican model. They stand out more, maybe through success, or they're sort of outside the Republican model and more Americanized. I would imagine from a European, and especially a French perspective, the more uh, outside, the more other, the more foreign. Yes, but at the same time, this, this is why these problems are so fascinating, because at the same time, they give the image of, a, of being very successful, that they, 
if you listen to the young migrants that are aware, even if the word is not good, but they say Jews as a group are successful. They are not victims of any kind of discrimination, which is true. You cannot say that Jews in France today are discriminated. So they are part of the nation, they are part of the republic, they are part of the system, and we cannot be part of the system. We are socially excluded, we are victims of discrimination, and so on. So it's one of the paradoxes of this story that uh, they succeeded, they are part, and they are considered not, you know, in the past, they were considered as a danger for the nation. They were considered as, uh, uh, no, no, it is not what he said. What he said is, this is also what, this is very new. The, the new antisemitism doesn't say they are a danger for the nation. The new antisemitism say these people are part of the nation and I cannot be part of the nation. I would like to be integrated to have jobs and so on. Professor Kaplan, oh, no, hold on. Professor Kaplan, then you I found your juxtaposition of the methodological problems of how to do the research and then the response to your work very interesting because of the parallels between them. And that it seemed to me there is data in the responses that in some ways is illustrative of these same methodological problems. And that made me curious about, are you taking this further? Are you doing anything more with this project? Is this finished? Um, what are your plans for going on with this, if, if you have any plans for going on with it? Well, for me it is not finished personally. I mean, I, I follow the debate and so on, but uh, I don't think I will again make this kind of field work, which has been, as far as I say, so three years or four years, uh, field work. It's a very long, so what I would like to do, what I would like to do or to participate is comparative research. That is to say, I would be very excited, for instance, to make uh, research uh, in other European countries, but also here in the States. I, I, I think it would be fascinating. And also, if I was going to do something, I will say you a few words about that, it would be in France on a very new, new, new issue for France. And this is also something a little bit American. It's the black issue. When, I was, when we were making this research, we did not speak so much in France of any kind of black anti-Semitism. It was not at stake, almost not. Then came, uh, there is a, uh, I don't know, a humorist. Uh, huh? No, no, a humorist, Dieu donné. How do you say a humorist? Yeah, but a uh, humorist, a comic, whose name is Dieu donné, who started with, uh, I don't know if it's black or half black, I, these are categories that I can, cannot choose, but so he started with this, then there was a group called Tribucai, kind of group that made awful statement, then there was a, a, a terrible story of a, of a young boy who was kidnapped by a group who finally killed him to, in order to get money, and he was kidnapped because he was Jewish, and so, and, so and, and, and these people from, uh, I don't know which African country, the, the leaders were say, explaining that uh, we, we must uh, ask money to the family because he's Jewish and if the family does not pay, the community will pay uh, anti-Semitic uh, statements. So there is something new in France, which is the danger or the potentiality of new developments of this new anti-Semitism among some black uh, group. So I am not working, but what I did is that uh, I, I support, uh, in a very active way, I support a new movement of black people in France who are clearly uh, trying to, uh, to defend or to promote um, anti-racism uh, processes and so on, and who are also against any kind of uh, anti-Semitism. So I, uh, I help this movement, so it is not research, but it's part of my uh, personal uh, commitment, let us say. So. Okay. Because of the time constraints, uh, Dr. Degatcher, I should ask questions. Which is very short. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, how come in the past you did not know Well, so how come in the, in the past, uh, Jewish has already used as a, an excuse when there were sometimes economic uh, collapse of new problems? Do you remember uh, the Irish Iran? 
pas du le sacré, le balance à le sacré. Mais déjà, quel est le mot que c'est dire que les sacrifices, Dieu, les gens, where they had an epidemic and also economic problems. I want to understand why they always use Jewish when there are problems in the economy, as you said, in many friends. There is a moment when there is no re when at least I have no answer. There is a moment when there is no answer. I am not the only one. There was a he was not a great historian, but he was a good historian, Leop Leon Polyakov who wrote about this, the Jewish, and anti he wrote a big history of anti-Semitism, I don't know how many volumes, six or seven volumes, and so. And at the end of his life, he was asking exactly your question. And he tried to publish a book, the title of which is La Causalité Diabolique, so dia Evil Causality, I don't know how to translate it exactly in English. Yeah. Because of, because of, yeah. Because of, so, because of, uh, but the idea of evil, the, the idea of we need scapegoats, etc., it is not totally satisfying. But I have no answer. So maybe, and I speak very seriously, what sociologists can do is to go as close as possible near the central core of the problem to explain under which conditions, as Farad explained, uh, is some situation for some groups and so on, some conditions make more possible or less possible anti-Semitism. But to go to your question, to arrive there, I cannot personally. I can go as close as possible and then I will listen to philosophers, to maybe to psychoanalysts, not the one I quoted, but others. Uh, uh, well, I will do that. I will do that, and, um, but um, I know that it is not my job to, and I have no, no answer, no answer. So we must also accept this, that we cannot answer to everything uh, necessary. Okay, so on that note, before I thank Professor David Rocha, I just want to tell you, on Thursday at 4.15 in the LC building, we're having another special uh, lecture by Professor Andreas Giro from the Central European University in Budapest, who will be speaking on the changing, rapidly changing situation in Hungarian society. So, on behalf of the initiative, thank you so much for coming. It was really amazing presentation.